We can ask everybody to stand for our prayer, please. Let us bow our heads and remember that we are in the presence of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for our fathers, young and old. We pray for our, fa our young fathers, newly embracing their vocation. May they find courage and perseverance to balance work, family, and faith in joy and sacrifice. We pray for our fathers around the world whose children are lost or suffering. May they know that the God of compassion walks with them in their sorrow. We pray for men who are not fathers, but still mentor and guide us with fatherly love and advice. We remember our fathers, our grandfathers, our great-grandfathers, who are no longer with us, but who live forever in our memory and nourish us with their love. Lord God, we ask for your blessings for all the fathers in our community. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Councilman Segura, would you lead us in the pledge? Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum this evening. In accordance with Council Resolution Number B14550, please be advised that all cellular telephones, pagers, beepers, and other devices of this nature must be deactivated or silenced throughout the Council meeting. Under the consent agenda this evening, we have Item 1, Approval of Minutes, the regular Council meeting of June 4, 2015. Item 2 is Approval of Alcoholic Beverage Permit Applications. We have none. Item 3 is Approval of Bingo and Public Gathering Applications. Item 3A is application number 1888-15, the Society of St. Vincent de Paul Archdiocese Council of New Orleans to hold a public gathering on September 12, 2015, from 6 a.m. to 1 p.m. for a Friends of the Poor walk slash run in Lake Town. Item 3B is application number 1889-15, the Treasure Chest Casino to hold a public gathering on July 4th, 2015, from 9 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. for a July 4th fireworks in Lake Town. Mr. Chairman, that concludes your consent agenda this evening. Motion by Council Member DeFranches, second by Council Member Conley on the consent agenda. <coughs> Council members, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7-0 for your consent agenda. Under the public appearance agenda this evening, we have item 9, public hearings for final passage. Item 9A is a public hearing regarding summary ordinance number 11,868. An ordinance authorizing a lease agreement between the Parish of Jefferson and the City of Kenner for portions of the Arthur P. Clay Community Resource Center bearing the municipal address of 200 Decatur Street in Kenner, Louisiana. Motion by Councilman Carroll, second by Councilman Reno to open a public hearing on summary ordinance 11-868. Is there anyone? Uh, we, don't, we don't have any presentations on this, do we, Madam Clerk? If we could, please complete the vote for the oh, open sorry. hearing. Sorry. That's okay. Have one more vote to open your hearing. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7-0 to open your public hearing this evening. Okay, now we're in a public hearing. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, got ahead of myself. It's okay. Um, no presentation. Is anybody in the audience that would like to speak regarding this summary ordinance? Seeing none, motion by Councilmember Carroll, second by Councilmember Reno to close public hearing. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7-0 to close your hearing. Motion by Councilmember Carroll, second by Councilmember Reno on adoption. Councilmember, we need to vote first? No. No. I'm sorry. Councilmember Carroll, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. I have just a, just a couple of questions. We actually guess more for informational purposes. I'd like Mr. Rell to come up to the mic and just to let everyone know 
the uh, AP Clay Center is, what it's used for, mm -hmm. and the funding that we get, what do we use it for, and you know, just a little bit insight of, of what, the, what this is all about. Okay, this is um, an agreement that we have between the city of Kenna and Jefferson Parish, and it's through the Jefferson Parish Community Action Agency, which administers the Head Start program. We house the Kenner Head Start um, program at the AP Clay Center, and for the use of that facility, of course, they pay us rent, where the kids from three to um, six attend that school. Um, the revenues from, from this help offset the cost of um, repairs and maintenance of the facility. Right, so we don't maintain any of the teachers or any of the aides no, or, or the, absolutely. what about the maintenance of the building, the daily the, maintenance, emptying the trash, is that on us a, or is that to Jefferson Parish? It's a, it's a combination. combination. On a daily basis, uh, Public Works um, works with my department and, and handle the ongoing maintenance and repairs that's necessary, but the Jefferson Parish does have on their staff um, uh, um, janitorial staff that does the day-to-day -day cleaning and things of that nature. But for items such as um, painting or repairing um, a leaking faucet or things like that, we'll handle that. Okay, if this contract, a one year, two years, three years, uh, when does it's, it renew um, again? It's structured where it's a one-year contract with four okay. um, additional annual options for renewal. So contiguously it's a five-year contract. Gotcha. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Terrell. Uh, seeing no other um, requests to speak, uh, council members, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 9B is a public hearing regarding summary ordinance number 11,869. An ordinance authorizing an intergovernmental agreement between the Parish of Jefferson and the City of Kenner for the use of property which includes the location of the North Kenner Library at 630 West Esplanade Avenue in Kenner, Louisiana, and for the non-exclusive use of the associated parking area and providing for related matters. Motion by Council Member Klein, second by Council Member DeFranches. Seeing no discussion, count, oh. That's to open your uh, hearing, please. Uh, uh, yeah, please vote. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, that's okay. You can uh, put your cue. One on. more vote to open your hearing, please. Oh, she's doing the vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7 0 to open your hearing. I'll give it to you. <coughs> Hold on one second. Council Member DeFranchise, you have thank the you. floor. Okay, it's on. I just wanted to thank Jefferson Parish and Councilman Zahn. Um, if anyone has been to the library, I don't know, in the audience, they've done a tremendous amount of work out there. They've worked on the parking lot, and this is the kind of cooperative effort between Kenner and Jefferson Parish that I think benefits everyone. So I just wanted to thank them for, uh, and Councilman Zahn for, their, for uh, moving forward with this project. Thank you. Actually, I did that wrong because we're, we're, we are in a public hearing. Is anybody in the audience that would like to speak? I'm sorry. Sure. That's okay. It's my, my, my mistake. Uh, seeing none, we need to close the public hearing. I'm going to talk next, but... Uh, are you going to get a chance? Um, council members, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7 0 to close your hearing. Okay, now a motion by Council Member Klein, second by Council Member DeFranches uh, on um, approval. Uh, Council Member Klein, you wanted to speak, so let me get you on. It's on. Oh, thank you. It's on. It's on, okay. I want to encourage all of residents of the city of Kenna, particularly those residents of District 4 to use our new library. It's been completely remodeled in and out. Uh, even the parking facilities have been remodeled. We now have an agreement with Jefferson Parish to maintain the parking facilities. Uh, they have new computers, new tables, new DVDs, all sorts of things that are interesting for kids as well as adults at the library. So I would encourage everyone to use it. Uh, uh, Councilman Zahn and myself and Mr. Francis and other members of the council and the mayor's office all worked together to make this project possible. Uh, it took a little time to do it, it took a little money to get it done, but now it's there for all to you. So please use it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, seeing no other discussion, council members, please vote on approval. 
Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7-0 to approve item 9B. Item 9C is a public hearing regarding summary ordinance number 11,875, an ordinance amending the 2014-2015 operating and capital budget and the 2013-2014, 2012-2013, 2011-2012, and the 2006 and 2007 years capital budgets to make necessary year-end budget adjustments. Motion by Council Member Conley, second by Council Member DeFranches to open a public hearing. Council members, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7-0 to open your hearing. Uh, Mr. McConnell, can you give us just a little brief description before we open this up to? Uh... Yeah, this is basically what I call just year-end uh, budget cleanup. Um, you know, state law requires that if during the year, if any revenues come in more than 5% under budget or if expenditures are more than 5% over budget in a particular fund, we have to amend the budget accordingly. Also, we've been told by the legislative order if we get any money from FEMA on some of the hurricanes, we have to amend our budget to budget those monies. And also, uh, any grant money we get during the year, we need to amend the budget to budget those. And we have a number of projects where, you know, we get either federal or state grants for 80 percent. We put up 20 percent. When we do our budget, we budget the 20 percent that we have to put up. Um, but for financial reporting purposes, at the end of the year, we have to add to the budget the 80 percent we got from the, the federal or state agencies that, that gave us the grant. So this is just to clear up the budget for the end of the year so when we do our annual financial issues, our report, we don't have any issues with the budget. Thank you, sir. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak? Seeing none, council members, please vote to close the public hearing. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7-0 to close your hearing. Motion by Council Member Conley, second by Council Member DeFranches. On approval, seeing no discussion, council members, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7-0 on approval of 9C. Item 9D is a public hearing regarding summary ordinance number 11,876, an ordinance authorizing a public hearing and approving the proposed fiscal year 2015 annual action plan of the Community Development Block Grant Program in the amount of $464,693 in the Home Investment Partnership Program Grant in the amount of $116,599 for the Community Development Department. Motion by Council Member Segure, second by Council Member Carroll. Um, to open a public hearing. Council members, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7-0 to open your hearing. We are now in a public hearing on summary ordinance 11-876. And Ms. Terrell, uh, would you come up, give a presentation? Yes, thank you, Council Chairman. Um, this is an annual grant that's awarded to the City of Kenna from the Department of Housing and Urban Development and the grant allows us to um, fund different programs and activities that's conducted throughout the city, which include public services, housing, and capital improvement um, activities. Um, HUD requires that we publish this um, budget 30 days, uh, solicit comments from citizens. Uh, we performed that requirement or fulfilled that requirement, I should say, as well as mailed out our intended use of these funds to concern citizens and organizations that we have on our mailing list. So we have fulfilled our public um, information requirements um, and I'm available for any questions and ask your approval of this budget. Thank you. Um, we're, we're in a public hearing, so is anybody in the audience that would like to speak? Seeing none, motion by Council Member Segure, second by Council Member Carroll to close the public hearing. Council members, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion, Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7 0 to close your hearing. Motion by Council Member Segure, second by Council Member Carroll uh, on approval. Uh, Council Member Carroll, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Rowe, if you would please come one more time. Uh, first, let me say thank you and your staff for the work that we do for the community development program. This is something that is, is throughout the country, everyone has it. The monies have been going down each year, yeah. but we are still able to maintain and do certain projects that uh, I think is still impor important for the community. So thanks again for you and your staff. Some of the things that you have made us aware of to be conscious of is to our ability to be able to spend this money accordingly without letting it slip. And you've, right. you've been honest about doing that. Uh, 
this particular year, we had such a project where we, we kind of put something on hold to advance another one. If you would, please, just to kind of elaborate a little bit about that and where we are as far as in the scheme of staying on top of the schedule that the, that the government is holding us accountable for. Well, basically HUD requires that um, monies that's awarded um, to entitlement programs such as ours is spent in a timely manner or um, they're taking actions to recapture those funds. So annually when we receive these grants within a two year time period, um, we should have them expended, which means we need to allocate monies to projects that we know will be ready to, to, to move um, once the funding is put in place, which basically requires us to do a better job um, than we've done in the, pla in the past of planning and um, selecting projects that, um, that can be done um, expeditiously. Um, we've um, met our expenditure rate requirements for the past um, two years, and I think we're in good shape with the activities that we've selected this year. And, and I appreciate the work with helping us to reallocate the money to where we can have projects moving, such as the Salvador project, which is um, on the, the books right now to get started. Right, I you know, thank Mr. Gonzalez and yeah. for his support on that. And you know, we're not abandoning some one of the projects that we started. Right. We just have to be able to secure more funding for it because it's, right. it's a lot more uh, than what we believe is going to be required for the Salvador Road. So both of them are still something we, we look forward to doing. It's just that because of the constraints that we have, it's best for us to, to have a better plan to go forward. Right. So thanks again for your support. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Councilmember Carroll, um, seeing no other discussion, council members, please vote on approval. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 9E is a public hearing regarding summary ordinance number 11,877, an ordinance accepting the award of fiscal year 2014 emergency solutions grant funding in the amount of $56,000 by the Louisiana Housing Corporation and amending the fiscal year 2015-2016 budget to allocate said funding for the Department of Community Development. Motion by Council Member Carroll, second by Council Member Segura to open a public hearing. Council members, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7-0. We're now in a public hearing for summary ordinance 11877. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak? Seeing none, council members, please vote to close the public hearing. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7 0. Motion by council member Carroll, second by Segur on approval. Seeing no discussion, council members, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 9F is a public hearing regarding summary ordinance number 11,878, an ordinance approving a conditional use for the Lewis Armstrong International Airport, North Terminal, and all related facilities and infrastructure located within airport property boundaries, which property is zoned AH-1 Aviation Heavy Industrial. <clears throat> um. Motion by Council Member DeFranches, second by Council Member Conley to open a public hearing. Council members, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7 0 to open your hearing. Mr. Abey, you have a presentation for us? Yes, sir. Thank you, Council President. The application is a conditional use. Uh, the applicant is the New Orleans Aviation Board. The proposal includes the new construction of a terminal complex located along the north side of the Louis Armstrong New Orleans International Airport property along with associated airport facilities and a new stormwater pump station. Now, in addition to the new North Terminal Complex, existing concourses A, B, and C, and a portion of the existing East Terminal Building will be demolished, while existing concourse D, along with both uh, existing parking garages, will be reused. The airport property is zoned AHI, Aviation Heavy Industrial, and occupies approximately 1,600 acres. The areas uh, to the immediate north include Bainbridge and Crestview Industrial Parks, along with Veterans Heights and Susan Park subdivisions, all of which connect to the Veterans Boulevard corridor. Now, in accordance with the site plan, the preliminary facilities of the complex include a 786,000 square foot airport passenger terminal and two concourses, a five-level parking garage located north of the terminal, 
two public parking lots located both east and west of the terminal, a taxi holding lot, a 50 space manager parking lot, a 30 space cell phone parking lot, and a 23,000 square foot central utility plant, all of which are uh, connected by an interior airport road system. Now in relation to the new terminal's road system, uh, the portion of the connector roadway extending from the airport's property line to Veterans Boulevard will be managed by the city of Kinner as part of a two-phase road improvement project to accommodate additional traffic that's expected to be generated by the new airport terminal. Phase one will extend from the airport property line to Veterans Boulevard. Uh, the project will include the construction of a four-lane divided roadway immediately to the east of Aberdeen Street. The work will include drainage improvements, landscaping, lighting, and a box culvert in canal number 14. Phase two will include adding lanes along Loyola Drive and extending turning lanes along Veterans Boulevard and Loyola Drive as needed, along with intersection improvements at Veterans Boulevard and Loyola Drive and at Loyola Drive and Interstate 10. A secondary airport access road will connect to Bainbridge Street. The Bainbridge Street route will be used for the airport's truck and delivery traffic. With regards to utilities, the site plan shows a new stormwater pump station located at the northwest portion of the airport property. The site plan shows the pump station connecting to the Butler Canal uh, between canals number 14 and 15 and discharging through the existing flood wall at the west return canal on the flood side of the flood wall. The new pump station will have 600 cubic feet per second pump capacity. With regards to sewage, the city of Kenner has agreed to allow the airport to tie in uh, the new terminal to the existing lift station located at 24th Street in Delaware. Now this is the former sewage treatment plant number one station. The station was upgraded in January of 2012 and has been determined to have the capacity to handle the added flow demands of the new terminal. As requested by Violia Water, the airport must install flow stream screening equipment and make the force main connection to the station at no cost to the city. With regards to landscape and buffering, the proposed landscape plan for the new terminal complex includes natural screening and buffer features around the interior roadway system, the parking lots, and the buildings. The landscape plan has been determined to comply with the city's landscape regulations, and coordination between the airport and the planning department regarding landscape and buffering is ongoing throughout the process. Now, the development of the new terminal complex will result in daily construction activities occurring throughout the course of the project. Therefore, it is referenced in the proposed ordinance that prior to the issuance of construction permits, a construction management plan be submitted to the Department of Inspections and Code Enforcement addressing all relative aspects of demolition and construction work at the project site. Uh, with regards to land use, um, our department along with the University of New Orleans' planning division has performed uh, recent land use evaluations of the area near the new terminal site. Uh, we do project that over the course of time, there will be, to a degree, a transition of land use in the vicinity, uh, potentially in Crestview and Bainbridge Industrial Parks and along Veterans Boulevard Corridor. It's also expected that some transition in land use may occur along the south side of the airport as well, uh, particularly along Airline Drive. Now, to the extent of change, uh, it's undetermined at this point, but we do anticipate that some change may occur over the course of time. Thank you, Mr. Bear. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak on this? Seeing none, uh, the Aviation Board, does anybody want to speak? Hello, Walter. <laughs> Good evening, Council President, members of the Council, Walter Kragowski, Deputy Director and Chief Operations Officer of the Airport. On behalf of our board, I'm very pleased to ask your consideration of this ordinance today for our conditional use approval of our North Terminal project. Um, we do have a brief presentation. It won't take uh, very long if you would indulge us to that. Sure. Thank you. By way of reference, the airport is a community asset. Um, we have an economic impact for the region and community. Um, it was, uh, we completed a study by Dr. Ryan, and he found in 2013 that the airport has a $5.3 billion economic impact for this region. 
with the North Terminal Project, we anticipate a 20% growth in that economic impact so that by 2023, the economic impact for our community will be over $6.4 billion. How this breaks down for the city of Kenner is very important for the community. And that is in 2013, there were over 7,000 jobs um, that were actually residents of the city of Kenner. That equated also to over $32.8 million in local income tax revenues for the city of Kenner. For a long time, since 1974, there have been many, many studies that have been done looking at the airport and what to do with the airport. And we're pleased that in 2013, the community came together and found um, a cohesiveness in coming forward and moving forward with a new terminal facility um, on the north, north side. And that happened in 2013. And as you see by this depiction, what it is is it's a replacement terminal facility. It's not an expansion, it's a replacement. We will be moving to the north, and if you see in that future site, um, we'll be moving to the north, and then our existing infrastructure will be demolished, as Mr. A. Bear had pointed out. Again, our north terminal project is all within the airport pro pro property boundaries itself, and we will not need to buy or acquire any additional properties for our north terminal project. I'd like to at this time have Ms. Jane Ahrens come forward. Um, she is a part of our program management team to kind of highlight some of the important uh, features of our North Terminal project um, to give you a little update on that. Okay. Good evening. I'll just give you a few highlights um, of sort of how the airport will look, feel, operate as we look to the new um, replacement terminal. Mr. A. Bear showed you the landscape plans a few minutes ago. This is a rendering that shows a little bit more detail about what we'll expect that landscaping to look like as it fills in, how it buffers the north edge of the site, and how it will fill in around the terminal and around the access roads. Next. This is an aerial view of what you would see as you come in for a landing at the airport. We have the garage in the foreground. You can see the hotel that is attached to the garage. Important to note that the hotel is not part of this project. It will be done by a third party developer at a future time. You can see the terminal in the midground and then the two concourses to the south. Looking at how the um, airport will look on the inside, it's important to note that the airport it, is being replaced because of aging infrastructure and an in inefficiencies of a functioning airport in a post 9-11 scenario. So moving forward, we're looking at making the airport much more uh, it energy efficient. And part of that is making sure there's a lot of natural light, making sure it's open, airy, and that the passengers have a comfortable, pleasant experience while they're in the airport. This is a view of the, of the anticipated concourse. And you can see how big that is compared to what we have today and looking forward to what we can provide to the passengers. As you know, in, a, in an airport, restrooms are one of the things that people comment on and have the biggest issues with, so a lot of time and effort has gone into every detail, including the restrooms. And Mr. Aber did a very good job of explaining the pump station. I don't think that additional information is particularly necessary at this time. Um, well, that's it. Thank you. Any questions? Um, is there anybody else in the audience that would like to speak? Thank you for your presentation. Can we do that? I'm going to go ahead and ask that we vote to close the public hearing. Council members, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7-0 to close your hearing. Motion by Council Member DeFranchez, second by Council Member Conley on approval. Council Member Conley, you wanted to speak? Okay, you have the floor. Walter, could you come back up for a minute? <clears throat> First off, I want to thank you, the administration, and Mr. Hudson, who's our representative on the board, for keeping us informed every step of the way. I know every time we, we, we made a phone call, you were very responsive. Uh, one question I had was, one, can we get this presentation to our IT department to put on our website to educate our constituents? Um, Certainly. Okay. We, we've left a copy on a jump drive, and it'll be able okay. to be used for your use. And also, as we go through this construction phase, there's gonna, we know there's going to be some hiccups and there's going to be some inconveniences. We went through it with the, levy, with the Corps of Engineers with a lot of le levy lifts and levy improvements. Could you all put
put together a hotline or some kind of um, mechanism where constituents or anybody inconvenienced could call with either complaints or concerns or even uh, you know, some suggestions? What we will be doing is our program management team will be looking at that and making sure that we have something covered for the residents to have some kind of hotline or some other means um, to be able to get information about the project and we anticipate that would be incorporated into the construction phasing plan that as Mr. Bear said will be shared with the city of Kenner and will work with the city of Kenner on making that come to reality. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Council Member DeFranches, you have the floor. Thank you, Council President. A couple of quick points. Um, I want to mention that Councilman Carroll and I, along with uh, Mr. Quigley, have been attending a numerous, innumerable, in fact, meetings uh, at the airport on this very issue before this project really got off the ground when we, in the initial phases, to make sure that we looked at every aspect of the project to make sure that the uh, best interests of the people of Kenner as well as the entire region were addressed. And I can tell you that the conversations were very extensive. I think both Councilman Carroll and Mr. Quigley will attest to that. We then later on, and later on along with Councilman Dinopoulos and Councilman Zahn, Mr. Gonzalez, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Alehani from Jefferson Parish, we have looked at every single aspect of how um, the drainage problem would be addressed. That had been a long-term problem that people had been living with in that area. We not only address the old problem, but the new problem. So we are moving forward to make sure that the interests of the people of the area are, are being addressed. And that's the cooperative effort that we've had between the administration, this council, and the airport. And I just want to say, again, I want to echo Councilman Conley's remarks that I think it's been a very good collaborative process and we are working together to make sure everyone moves forward in this region and everyone benefits from this project. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Klein, you have the floor. Yes, uh, Mr. Grakowski, can you come back up for a minute? Did I pronounce your name correctly? Certainly. Okay. Yep. Uh, I know that the administration, the council members, city officials, airport officials, and engineers have had several meetings which we have attended or uh, the administration has attended, et cetera. It's my understanding after a compilation of all those meetings that the drainage in the area will actually be improved. And I know to, to us non-engineers, 600 uh, feet per cubic second uh, it doesn't mean a whole lot to us, but in essence what it means, and maybe Mr. Quigley can uh, comment on that, or Mr. Gonzalez, that the drainage in the area is actually improved or will be improved when the new pump station is completed. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. And in fact, with the 600 CFS pump station, in fact, it's actually providing a 15% uh, increase in capacity of pumping water out of the system. Um, the beauty of our project is, is that the uh, drainage pump station will actually be taking that water out right immediately and putting it into the Western Return Canal as uh, all other parish uh, drainage does. Uh, go into, um, so it'll be actually extracted out, um, so it, it benefits the whole community and improves uh, the drainage in the whole uh, area. Okay, and, and also just for clarity, you said it was a 15% increase in pumping capacity, is that correct? That is correct, over what is necessary to address existing conditions and take care of the North Terminal project itself. I understand that the pump uh, system will be on airport property and will be maintained and paid for by the airport. Is that correct? Yes. So it's without cost to the city of Canada that it will be increased by about 15 percent. That is correct. All right. Just for our residents, when is the uh, start date and the anticipated completion date of the airport, North Terminal and the parking facilities, et cetera? Right now, we will be completing design. Design will be completed on the North Terminal project June 30th. We do have a construction manager at risk that is on board. They have 30 days to give us a guaranteed maximum price. And once we, if we agree to uh, construction phasing and the guaranteed maximum price, it would be starting later this year. The goal is to have the North Terminal Project open and operational by 2018. Okay, thank you very much for your help. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Uh, if I can get this to turn off. Okay. 
Council Member Carroll, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Thank President. You. I'd like to first thank our guest from the uh, New Orleans Airport, our representative on the uh, Aviation Board, Mr. Hudson, for coming today. Thanks for all of the meetings that we've had up to this point, uh, but now things really will start to happening. You know, we talk about the, the economic impact, we talk about the jobs, we talk about making things better, which is fantastic. And for the average, for, for, for us in those meetings, for the airport, for the federal government, these are numbers that we like to hear and talk about. But, you know, the reality is for the people who I represent within District 1 from the Veteran Heights in the Susan Park area, that's, that's fine, but now, they, you know, when things happen from day to day, this is where they become involved. This is where they have to come in day in and day out to deal with the traffic, deal with the noise. It is good to know that from an environmental standpoint, we've checked off all the boxes for drainage, for sound, for pollution. I would just like to say again, because you know some people hear rumors and stuff, one, there will, be, there will not be any buyout like there was in South Kenner. Two, there will not be any new runways. And three, the facility will be built on the airport property. And you know I can say that 100 times every day for every hour, there are some people who will just not believe that. There are some people in the area who are just not going to accept some of the changes that's going to happen. And, and I can understand that. I believe going forward with the help of the New Orleans Airport, Mr. Gonzalez, with Digital, we had a, a fantastic meeting the other about a month ago where we started to identify or to talk about some things that before they get started, we're going to need to address, like Councilman Conley said about the hotline, which is fantastic. These are the day-to-day -day issues that we are going to be getting calls, and then when we get calls, we're going to call you and ask questions about this. How can we alleviate, or how can we support for the businesses and, and some of the facilities that will be along Aberdeen and Veterans Highway? We do know this, this project is, uh, is over half a billion dollars when people want to know how their tax dollars are being spent, but because they will be directly affected, they want to know also how can this be the what is the best outcome for them? And that is our responsibility. From that meeting, there were some concerns about safety issues, which is, should always be priority one, that we will always have to be on top of. We have to have that open line of communication. I had a conversation with Mayor Landry this morning to let him know this, 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 is, this project is being done and being the, the roadway work by the city of Kenner, by one of the great, one of the good uh, contracts at Digital, but this is still the New Orleans, you know, th they were the one with the idea, with the vision, so he has to have as much input as Mayor Yenny on this to be able for us to pick up the phone and to facilitate things when need be. And that is the most important thing, to be able to facilitate the concerns of the people from Veteran Heights and Susan Park. And as we all on the council here are supporting this, we all will be getting calls, I'm sure, because it just doesn't affect District 1. It will affect the entire city, from drainage, from traffic, and all. We do know that that traffic will be a concern that we have. We also know it will be between seven and 10 years before there's any type of exchange from the interstate going directly on to the airport. We know that the project is proposed to be ending by 2018, and there's a lot of things that can happen between there. So it is good that you guys are here today to express the support and to be open and willing and ready to address things. As like Councilman said, things are gonna come up and we wanna make sure that for the people that we represent that you know, we don't call numbers and no one answers the numbers, that someone is there to address, the, to address it immediately and to find out and to facilitate. So as we go forward, uh, we're gonna keep our, keep our fingers crossed, you know, hope for the best, prepare for the worst, but this is, this is part of any project that improves something. There will be some times that it's gonna make a lot of people mad at times. So we just wanna make sure that we're all on board with this to support the people from the Susan Park area who have been sub subdivision, some who've been living there for over 50 years, that they're gonna get the same support that they have given over the years to the city of Kenner. Thanks again for coming. We look forward to working with Jim and everyone else, all you guys. Look forward for the council and we look forward to supporting the, uh, the new terminal. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Council Member Segura, you have the floor. Thank you, Council President. Uh, as we've discussed, we've had comments relative to the potential problems, whether it be drainage, traffic, noise. Um, just for the 
re-edification uh, of everybody to understand why we need a new terminal. If someone wants to come up and give us more definitive information on how this new terminal will be more of an economic uh, catalyst in this area, on the way it's designed, how it'll help bring in more sales taxes, more uh, economics. Walter, you again? Certainly. Okay. The existing uh, terminal in majority part is, a, is over 50 years old. It was done, um, it was done pre 9-11 and as we know, 9-11 changed the way uh, we all fly out in and out of airports. The configuration of our concessions is mismatched. We don't have the necessary concessions um, and robust concessions post checkpoint because remember back in the day we would be able to transverse in and out. You didn't have to have a ticket, didn't have to subject to TSA screening. So with the new terminal facility, what it does is it actually aligns those uh, key uh, concessions where 95 uh, percent of the concessions will be post security checkpoint. Um, those are revenue generating because certainly Kenner uh, receives um, tax revenues off of sales taxes that are generated at the airport. They share in that so that we will see an uptick in those concession revenues. In addition, um, the terminal facility, as Ms. Aarons had indicated, um, is, has got a lot of uh, constraints and some issues uh, with its archaic infrastructure. Um, that includes the security checkpoint. When you have a convention or a group that is leaving, you know, you have to go into one of the checkpoint areas and it's not conducive. There's no way to expand those checkpoint areas in our existing terminal. So if Southwest ran a, a sale fair and there was a big convention in town, all 20,000 folks depart and come to the airport and then we have lines at the checkpoint experience. What we are doing is we will have a consolidated checkpoint uh, facility so that passengers can seamlessly go through that checkpoint, get into their gate hold areas. Again, with the transparency that uh, Ms. Aarons had talked about with having the open concourse con uh, uh, opportunity there, um, we have the concessions down the middle which makes it more optimal so that people can watch at their gate or see their gate as they uh, buy things from the concessions. In addition, um, as Mr. Hebert had indicated, um, the existing uh, parking facilities that are on our south side, um, which are the short-term and long-term parking garages, they will be reutilized for long-term parking for the north terminal facility. So we will have some additional parking, 2,000 spots on the north terminal, and we will have the uh, 5,000 spaces on the existing south side. What that means for Kenner is Kenner has um, uh, attacks on parking revenue. So as we increase and expand on that parking, we have the expectation that those revenues and those dollars that are being generated will also increase, which would also be beneficial to the city of Kenner. Okay, and one last point. I know in some of our discussions, y'all were very excited about how this new configuration would help bring in more flights, and that means more people come into this area to be business or tourists, so can you explain a little bit how you envision this terminal helping enticing more airline flights here? Well, the basis and strategic uh, uh, basis for part of this ter terminal project is to reduce that cost per employment to the air carriers because not having to maintain an old, outdated 50-year old facility allows us to reduce and be consistent with our strategies to reduce the cost of the airlines. As we reduce the cost to the airlines, we're seeing some increases in uh, commercial activity levels. In addition, with having better facilities, it, uh, it allows those air carriers to have quicker turns on the gates um, because then they'll be able to utilize those gates more efficiently and more effectively. So we are hopeful that with this terminal replacement facility that we will see that uh, growth in air service and continued air service growth that we've been experiencing. Okay, thank you. Council Member Ampastata, you have the floor. Yeah, I just wanted to make one issue clear. Uh, there was an, uh, a reference made to traffic in a couple of the discussions tonight. So for the few people who are here in the audience, but also anyone watching, make sure they understand, traffic is not just something that the city is waiting to see what happens. Um, any traffic issues would certainly impact District 5, as the, the new exit and entrance will be at Loyola. 
um, the city, the mayor, the administration, and the council have already taken proactive measures to address the traffic issue. There's a study currently uh, being done by, I believe, digital engineering um, that is also using the studies, the ext extensive studies done by the airport already to assess if there will be a traffic issue and if so, what measures need to be taken to address that. So I just want to make sure that's clear that that is something that is currently being contemplated and being worked on um, and was approved several meetings ago by this council. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no other discussion, council members, please vote on approval. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 10 is opening of bids. We have none. Item 11 is reclassification of zoning for final passage. We have none. Item 12 is other ordinances for final passage. We have none. Item 13 is resolutions and motions by council members. Item 13A is a resolution appointing council member to be determined to serve as council president effective July 1st, 2015. Mr. Chairman, I've received a request from council member Reno to nominate council member Carroll to be inserted into the legislation. Motion by Council Member Reno, second by Council Member Conley. I, I, I had already put it up. Seeing no discussion, Council Members, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7 0 to nominate to elect Council Member Carroll as Council President. Congratulations, Council President elect. Item 13B is a resolution appointing council member to be determined to serve as council vice president effective July 1st, 2015. Mr. Chairman, I have received a request this evening from council member Reno to nominate council member Segur to be inserted into the legislation. Motion by council member Conley, second by council member Reno. Council members, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7-0 to elect Council Member Segura as Council Chairman, Vice Chairman. Okay. Congratulations, Vice President elect Segura. <laughs> Item 13C is a resolution making an application to the State Bond Commission to consent and authority to issue, sell, and deliver sales tax bonds of the City of Kenner and the total aggregate principal amount of not to exceed $15 million, setting forth the security therefore and providing for other matters in connection therewith. Motion by Council Member DeFranchez, second by Council Member Conley. Um, Mr. Mr. Becknell. Go back now, 3445 North Causeway Boulevard, Metairie. Um, this is a resolution to start the process. It doesn't bind you to complete the process. We have to come back with an ordinance. This is connect in connection with making application to the State Bond Commission to issue a bond, basically, that DEQ purchases from you um, for sewage improvements uh, using sales tax. It's a sales tax bond. What happens is we fought, we uh, if you all decide to pass this, uh, we file an application with the State Bond Commission. Um, they consider it. We've already s prepared a financial disclosure, which, which outlines the cost of doing it, the repayment source, and all the other information the Bond Commission requires. Um, the way this is worded, it uses parameters, we call it. So it basically says not to exceed $15 million. The final price will be determined, or final amount determined later based on the administration and, and your financial people, um, your financial advisor and, and, and uh, Mr. McConnell. And then th the best thing about this transaction is DEQ always has these low interest loans to help uh, cities and municipalities, parishes improve sewerage. And as you know, better than I do, I mean, over, I've done work for you all off and on since 1983. And you all have had EPA problems and various things which you, this council's taken care of and previous councils also. So this furthers that in terms of, of benefiting the sewerage system and the interest rate would be not to exceed 0.95%, which is an incredible rate in today's market. So basically to summarize, what this does is give my law firm authority 
to file an application with the State Bond Commission. They meet once a month, so if we get this done today, you would be on the July agenda. And then from there, we'll meet with uh, Assisting Securities, your financial uh, advisor. It's a private placement, so DEQ buys the bond. You know, it's much easier than a public sale type project. So if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them, but we will come back with an ordinance. This is not the final authority to go ahead and, and make the loan or incur the debt. Okay, uh, Council Member Klein, Mr. President. Oh, you should be on. I've got a question. This is not a revenue bond, is that correct? That's correct. I, and I've had various discussions with various people about the definition of revenue bonds. Louisiana categorizes bonds in two categories, general obligation or revenue. A true revenue bond, and I'm speaking from the Wall Street financial market definition of a revenue bond, and I can send you some information. If you go on the uh, LMA website, which you all are familiar with, they give a synopsis, I know, of the definitions of the types of bonds you ca can issue in Louisiana. A pure revenue bond, by definition, in, in the, the uh, financial markets, is a bond where the revenues from the asset retire the debt, that would be like a toll road, say, is a good example. If you uh, sell bonds to build a toll road and you pledge the tolls, that's a revenue bond. The revenue from the thing you're building pays the debt. In Louisiana, because our ad valorem taxes aren't tremendous like some states, we typically do sales tax bonds. Louisiana forever has called those sales tax revenue bonds because that's identifying the revenue source to repay. It's not that they're pure revenue bonds in the financial definition. So uh, this is captioned uh, sales tax bonds. But please understand, Louisiana typically around the state, they'll call them sales tax revenue bonds because sales taxes are the re source of revenue to repay the debt. Yes, I had several calls from the citizens in my district and I just wanted you to explain the difference of what a revenue bond is as opposed to this is a loan, is that correct? It's a loan, but the way DEQ does loans is we actually issue a bond. It's much like if you made a loan at a bank, you sign a promissory note or some other debt instrument. So the debt instrument in this case that DEQ will hold is a bond. Right, and we're not, the city of Kent is not issuing the bond, the DEQ is. Obviously they have to fund this loan and the way they do it is to issue, they issue a bond, not the city of Kent, right? The city of Kent is the issuer of the bond. In other words, just like if you went to a bank and signed a note, you're the maker of the note, so and the bank holds it. In this situation, you issue a bond, which is the instrument that says you owe back to, to DEQ a certain amount of money. I understand, and the percentage of interest is 0.9%, which is very, very low. Is that correct? It, it's a, yes, sir. It's a maximum. Their, their rate changes from time to time, but right, it's approximately 0.95. Yes, sir. Okay. And the... The loan or the bond will be paid back by sales tax, right? That's correct. It's not going to be an increase in tax, so it's not going to be from the sewage charges. Correct? That's correct. And 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 the state state statutes um, have limitations on so municipalities do not get in trouble with their sales tax. There there is a limit on how much of your sales tax you can actually use for bonds, and so you can't issue more than more than seventy five percent of your sa you use more than seventy five percent of your sales tax. The Bond Commission um, does a very thorough job of vetting these projects to make certain that, that they're not going to have to deal with somebody defaulting on bonds. The city of Kenner has done very well over the years, as you all know, and has never had a problem with any bond issue they've ever done. Okay, I understand. And uh, I'd like uh, Mr. Gonzalez to help us out a little bit here, that the some of the monies will be used to uh, demolish the old plan in the Chateau area, correct? That's correct. That's one of many projects that we have programmed under this loan, the demolition of the two wastewater treatment plants that are no longer active. Okay, and they've been vacant for quite some time now, and this would be a good thing to get them demolished, a safety hazard, etc. so we can probably or eventually put that property back in commerce. Uh, that's one thing that we have in mind, yes. So the demolition is definitely under this program. Okay, and another question, uh, this uh, money, these monies will be used also for odor control devices, and one of them will be at the Chateau and Vintage area. Is that correct? Uh, one of the projects that is under this 
loan application is an auto control unit for the uh, shaft or the uh, vintage and metal sewer lift station. Yes, it is. Okay, and that's already been allocated out of those funds. Is that correct? Well, it's, it's part yeah, of sure. this $15 million loan, sure. Okay, thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. I appreciate it. Thank you. That's all the questions I have. Thank you, Council Member Klein. Thank you. Council Member Conley, you have the floor. Well, I, I just wanted to, I was going to say what Councilman Klein said about the, um, the blighted old sewage plants that are one of them's in District 4 and the other one's right over in District 2 that have um, been vacant for some time. And I'm, I'm glad that, that the administration and the council's moving to demolish these, these, this blight because um, we do get a lot of calls on it. So, and, and there's a litany of other projects that this money's going to be used for, all dealing with infrastructure and improvements, uh, dealing with the sewage station. So I was just riding his, his tide. So. Thank you, Council Member Conley. Council Member Carroll, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Thanks again for coming, Mr. Becknell. Uh, a lot of the information that you shared today was important to us. And, and one other thing, just that, so I can clarify this, because this is an ordinance, that it, this will be going to the bond commission. And the process for that to happen, they determine our ability to be able to pay this back. What, what all does this consist of for us to be able to, why are we going through that process? Yes, so you can explain. Yes, sir. Under state law, we have a bond commission, which some states don't. Mississippi doesn't. The governor decides what to do and not do. Um, in our situation, we have a state bond commission made up of John Kennedy, uh, Tom Shedler, the Secretary of State, somebody from the AG's office, and some legislators and some other people. Um, they meet once a month. What they, their function is, well, let me go back a second. This is actually a resolution, which means it's not binding as law. We do a resolution, authorize, they, they want to see that I'm authorized on your behalf to file this application. The applications uh, contain a lot of financial information as well as a financial disclosure because they don't want somebody going out there selling bonds just so, and I'll say it, I mean, so attorneys and accountants and financial people can make money. They want to make certain it makes sense. So they look at the cost of doing the transaction. They look at the, your ability to repay it out of the funds, uh, the source of repayment that we tell them is there. The bond commission itself has a large staff of analysts. So when we submit the application, it's, it's assigned to one of their financial analysts. We will then receive constant questions from them, you know, about your budget, about your financial projections, whatever it may be. We normally hopefully answer all of those questions in the month we have. You have to, you have to file a month before the meeting. So the deadline, you know, we're going to file now. The, the deadline um, will file tomorrow, in fact. But, but we'll, well, in fact, we have the application ready. But basically, pending your approval. Once the application's filed and it's assigned, we, we receive phone calls regarding your finances, regarding the cost of doing the transaction. Um, you asked about the projects. We have to list projects. They're in the ordinance, if you notice, in the third whereas because the bond commission won't let you sell bonds just to sell bonds. They want to know what you're going to build or repair or maintain. Um, we go to the bond commission meeting, and then if there's any questions, we'll handle them. If we've done our job, there normally won't be questions at the meeting because we'll have answered those in advance. After that, we have to come back to you for, for a supplemental ordinance. You all have a bond ordinance. Some, some municipalities use indentures. You all have used a bond ordinance to do b various bond issues. You're up to, this will be the 12th if you do this. So we'll do the bond ordinance, which basically will lock in, you know, what we what the, the terms of the bond will be. We'll know by then. And then we come back to you, put it on first summary, read in the summary, and then come back, you know, uh, at the next meeting to have it passed or not passed. So the process actually takes several months, you know, including, uh, I know uh, Mr. Gonzalez has worked hard to get the application in. The first step of this process is to file an, a lengthy application with DEQ. And so they review it to make certain that, that you can justify your need for the loan because it is very good terms. And I, I assume they have a limited amount of money. So you all submitted your application we do this resolution. Once this resolution's passed, um, 
then we come back and start working on the project pending your approval of the ordinance. All right, and, and thanks again for that explanation. And, and, that's, and I guess for myself, a lot of the information I'm getting tonight, and I, I am, it's good to know that this still has to come back to us. So we will be getting additional information because right now, I'm, to be honest with you, if I had to vote tonight, I probably would not support this. It is important to me to get additional information and the finances of the city of Kenner is important. We will get another picture once this comes back to us from the bond commission. There are a lot of questions from people within the city who wants to know because you know they wanna know how, how many years it's gonna be, how much it's just gonna put us in debt, and are we able to sustain because as we know, we live and die in the sales tax. We have had some success over the past couple of years, better than what we anticipated. But that's, that's where it is. And if, and if things doesn't go as well, we are gonna have to make other adjustments to be able to pay this stuff back. So once that portion to the bond commission happens, it comes back to us. I will have some additional time to speak with Mr. McConley, Mr. McConley to talk about our ability to be able to pay this back. And for me, that's where it's gonna stand based on everything else going on and for us to be able to add this to our already plate that we have. That, that's correct, Councilman. And, and, and I'll offer my services if you have procedural Thank questions. You. I'm not involved in the decision making whether you do something or not. Uh, you all are certainly prudent in looking at everything. Um, the Bond Commission does give you a second level because the state treasurer is a real stickler for making certain as best he can. Now, obviously, um, I guess there's some, there's some projection involved in terms of sales tax, but but you all are in very good shape right now. So you, I, I would suggest you do what you said. And then if you have procedural questions about the process and timing, I'll be glad to handle that for thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks thank, for your support. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council Member Carroll. Um, before I turn it over to the uh, next council member that would like to speak, uh, this is strictly a resolution to allow the city to make an application for bonds. Uh, and you know, there's nothing that's gonna happen by us doing this other than by allowing the city to make an application uh, to the state bond commission. That's all this is. So that's correct. That, Councilman, I'm sorry, <laughs> that's correct. I mean. This deal could die tomorrow. I mean, if you all tell me, you know, you're, you're not going forward, so it's up to you all. Right. Um, the problem is, because they meet once a month, you lose a month by not doing this. Now, so, it, I mean, I always think it's better to start the process, and I've done a lot of these. They don't happen sometimes, you know, but uh, at least we're on the agenda. If the body, the political body wants to go forward, we go forward. But you all certainly have a lot of time to look at what Councilman Carroll's talking about and decide, make your own decision what you want to do. Now, I will tell you this, um, the DEQ and DNR have some of the best programs around because, you know, you can't borrow money at this rate in the bond market, so. Thank you, Mr. Becknell. Yes, sir. Uh, Council Member DeFranchez, would you like to close? Thank you. Um, unfortunately, my remarks are rather redundant right now because before, Councilman Carroll spoke and Councilman Reno. one of the big points that you made that I wanted to reiterate was the fact, again, this is a resolution. This is not the final ordinance, and the final ordinance will come back when it has a force of law. This does not. Uh, therefore, I just wanted to make that quick point, and we can't make that point enough to the people that they will have a voice, and you will have a voice when the ordinance comes before this council, and I wanted to, again, state that. But, Mr. Gonzalez, if you could just make one quick point for me, please, to we are not in, in total compliance with the DQ yet, are we? No, ma'am, not yet. We have made a lot of progress. I think you would agree with me, and I think most of the people in the audience would agree with us. We've made a lot of progress in you know, coming to, into that compliance with the DQ. We still have steps we have to take, and this will be one way in which we can get closer uh, and meet the, the requirements the DQ has said before us in order to come into complete compliance. Am I not? Yes, you're totally correct. Thank you, and again, you, the people will have a voice. Oh, absolutely, absolutely ma'am. As you know, they're allowed to speak on every ordinance that comes up. You know, absolutely. So certainly people can say what they want to say. And Thank you, Mr. Becknell. Thank, thank you, you Mr. Gonzalez, and thank you, Council President. Thank you. Uh, I believe Mr. Brown would like to make a comment. Thank you, Mr. President. Richard Brown, 824 Sessions Lane, Kenner. Uh, 
first off, I'm, I'm not necessarily opposed to the, the bond issue and the loan. I don't know enough yet to know whether I'd be opposed to it. I've got to say it is a very good interest rate. And if my concerns or objections can be satisfied, I'll be fully supportive of it. <laughs> um, but I've got two concerns, and I've addressed this with a couple of council members, and I've discussed it with Keith Conley. And Mr. Conley had Mr. Becknell call me. We had a very pleasant and informative conversation, and I very much appreciated Mr. Conley, and I appreciate Mr. Becknell's call. My question, my first question, I've got two. First is whether this is the type bond issue that requires a vote of the people. If this is a revenue bond, and despite what Mr. Becknell said, I believe there are still questions as to, to whether it is, if it's a revenue bond, because it is payable from a specific revenue stream, a specific sales tax. Under Kenner City Charter, revenue bonds require a vote of the people. I don't think that point is clear yet. Like the case out in, in the state of Washington where this president of the NAACP is, is claiming to be an African-American woman, the facts indicate perhaps otherwise. So the fact that someone makes the statement these are not revenue bonds doesn't necessarily mean they're not. That's someone's interpretation, which may or may not be correct. Um, and I understand that these bonds are, are now being called sales tax bonds, but according to the information on the Louisiana Municipal Association's website, sales tax bonds require the approval of the people, I believe. They require a vote of the people. Um, I see nothing in here requiring a vote of the people in any respect. And the sales taxes that are being used to pay for this were imposed 50 and 60 years ago. I'm concerned that, that whether they're revenue bonds or sales tax bonds, this requires a vote of the people. For that reason, I urge this council to either vote this down or to defer it, just defer it till the next meeting. I know at least one council member was under the impression this was only up for first reading. My other concern is if these are for sewer improvements, why I got it. I got this. aren't the why isn't this being paid for from the increase in our sewer fees that the council imposed, oh, I'm guessing six years ago, six years ago, give or take. I thought that was to completely renovate and then bring our sewer system up to date. I'm just wondering why the necessary, why it's necessary for a $15 million bond issue. I was under the impression these increased sewer fees were to pay for it. Those are my two concerns. I hope someone can ad address those. And I hope that at least for now, the council will defer this until we have some more answers. I, I, um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, any, Mr. Any Brown. questions for me? Thank you, Mr. Brown. Um, I'm going to answer some of your questions, but I'm not willing to get in a discussion with you over it. You've made your comments. Uh, this city has done sales tax bonds before, and, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a sales tax bond. It's not a revenue bond. And we've done sales tax bo bonds before. We just did some for... Uh, corridor redevelopment and all, and that's the way the city raises capital. This work needs to be done. This is simply tonight a resolution. I'm going to repeat one more time. It's a resolution to allow the city to make an application. This will come back again in front of this council for approval on whether we move forward or not. So hopefully you'll get all your answers between now and then. We're moving forward. With progress in the city I thank the administration I thank this council we've been doing a lot of stuff getting a lot of things done and Kenner is better today than it was five ten years ago we're moving in the right direction this is something that needs to be addressed and it needs to be handled so seeing no other discussion council members please vote on approval Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7-0.
Item 13D is a resolution approving an agreement with the State of Louisiana Department of Transportation and Development for West Esplanade Avenue bridges slash box culvert at Duncan Canal State Project Number H period 011731 Federal Aid Project Number H011731 City of Kenner Project Number 2014-001A-CIP. Motion by Council Member Segur, second by Council Member Klein. Seeing no discussion, Council Members, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 14 is items removed from the consent agenda. We have none. Item 15 is acceptance of contracts and similar matters approved by the mayor. Motion and by oh. Item 15A is summary ordinance number 11,879, an ordinance approving an intergovernmental agreement between the East Jefferson Levy District and the City of Kenner for the installation and maintenance of a surveillance camera at the Kenner Police Training Center at 1939 Reverend Richard Wilson Drive in Kenner, Louisiana, 70062. Motion by Council Member Carroll, second by Council Member Impostata. Seeing no discussion, Council Members, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 15B is summary ordinance number 11,880. An ordinance accepting the lowest response bid received for an annual contract to provide repair, maintenance, and or troubleshooting of overhead lighting, lamps, fixtures, poles, foundation, and wiring on all city properties on an as-needed basis not to exceed $300,000 annually in accordance with seal bid number 15-6279 for the Department of Public Works. Motion by Council Member Ampostato, second by Council Member Segur. Seeing no discussion, Council Members, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 15C is summary ordinance number 11,881. An ordinance accepting the response of bid received from Bayou Tree Service Incorporated to provide tree work on an as-needed basis in accordance with seal bid number 15-6278 and an amount not to exceed $50,000 annually for the Department of Public Works. Motion by Council Member Klein, second by Council Member DeFranchise. Seeing no discussion, Council Members, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 15D is summary ordinance number 11,882. An ordinance authorizing the purchase of two LACON FI-7280 flatbed scanners with associated software, warranty, and maintenance services and an amount of $9,758.50 from LACON Systems Incorporated doing business as HOV services available st through state contract number 406077 for the Kenner Police Department. Motion by Council Member Segur, second by Council Member Conley. Seeing no discussion, Council Members, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 15E is summary ordinance number 11,883. An ordinance approving the purchase of Tyler Go Docks module and related services in an amount of $6,500 for the Department of Information Technology and Telecommunications. Motion by Council Member Reno, second by Council Member Apostato. Council members, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 15F is summary ordinance number 11,884. An ordinance approving a four-year professional services agreement with Duplanche, Ratman, Hogan, and Mayor, LLP, to provide audit services for the Office of the Kenner City Council in accordance with Section 2.28 of the City of Kenner Home Rule Charter and request for proposal number 15-6272. Motion by Council Member Reno, second by Council Member Segur. Seeing no discussion, Council Members, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 5 2. Council Members Conley and Impostata are opposed.
Item 15G is summary ordinance number 11,885, an ordinance approving a services agreement by and between the City of Kenner and Base Logistics LLC to provide food services for disaster and or emergency events in accordance with request for proposal, dash, proposal number 15-6273. Motion by Council Member Klein, second by Council Member DeFranches. Council Member, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 15-H is summary ordinance number 11,886, an ordinance approving a services agreement with Base Logistics LLC to provide emergency supplies and services for disaster and or emergency events in accordance with request for proposal number 15-6274. Motion by Council Member Segur, second by Council Member Ampostato. Seeing no discussion, council members, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 15-I is summary ordinance number 11,887, an ordinance approving a second amended and restated agreement for wastewater operations, maintenance, and management services by and between the City of Kenner and Veolia Water North America South-South -South LLC. Motion by Council Member DeFranches, second by Council Member Conley. We got some discussion here, man. Mr. Morello, you can come up and speak. Al Morello, 4260 East Loyola Drive, 5th District, 43 years. Uh, I got a couple of questions. I'd like to know uh, how this is going to be beneficial to the city of Kenner in terms of efficiency of those wastewater treatment plants and cost to the taxpayers. I also would like to know what is the duration of this contract? You, you That's it. Morell? That's it. Thank we'll, you. We'll answer your questions. Um, Mr. Quigley, would you respond, please? Yes, the duration of the contract is for 4.5 years. And um, in a nutshell, to answer the other part of it, it's very beneficial for the citizens. Um, this particular contract is totally different than, than the other contract, the, the pr contract we have right now, um, in that reimbursable expenses will be clearly defined and to make up approximately 90 percent of the contract, where presently is just, it's just 39 percent of the contract. So there'll be full transparency of reasonable reimbursable expenses. We're only going to pay for what we get. Staffing will be a fixed number. Any reduction or, incre or increase requires city approval. It'll be fixed at 35 and a half employees. Therefore, there's going to be a potential savings with any attrition or any temporary vacancies, which was totally unlike the previous contract. Uh, there'll be a fixed management fee of $545,000, which includes both overhead and support and profit. And of course, the, half of that is the overhead support, which is uh, item or which is services that actually benefits the project. The annual cost reductions will be a savings of $244,000 from the existing budget. Veolia is going to waive $260,000 of interest that is owed contractually. Uh, also featured in the contract is an opportunity for mutual savings in regard to the electricity and the septage program. I uh, will continue to uh, access Veolia's technical ex expertise. Uh, of course, Veolia provides expedient and efficient service in response. Uh, they, they will continue to cont take advantage of Veolia's corporate pricing uh, agreements. Uh, they're a nationwide company that has an economy of scale and will be able to take uh, advantage of those. Uh, we'll be able to continue to take advantage of Veolia's health and safety programs, employee training and cert certifications, their ability to respond to emergency events with specific expertise, similar to like Entergy is able to call, cr call crews in from all over the, the United States. They will be able to help us in emergency situations. And of course, Veolia ha as a company and it ha has a, maintains a very professional reputation worldwide. So that is why there are many, many benefits to this new contract, and we strongly recommend uh, support. Thank you. 
Council Member DeFrancia. Thank you, Council President. Mr. Morell, you will remember I was one of the most outspoken council member against uh, the old Veolia contract. In fact, I tried to get uh, our then Mayor uh, Munez to go to court and try to break the contract and maybe force them back to the table to at least renegotiate the contract so Ken Kenner would reap some benefit. Because we were paying for things whether we got them or not, basically. Whether they had to do any repairs or not, we were paying for them every month. And so it did not benefit the, the citizens of Kenner in my, in my estimation. And in addition to that, it was a long, long long-term contract. So if we had a problem, it was very difficult to address that problem. Four point, four and a half years, that gives us the ability, if it doesn't work, we can go back to the drawing board. We also looked at bringing it in-house. When we evaluated the cost of bringing it in-house versus the um, renegotiated, notice the key word, renegotiated contract, it would have been more beneficial for us to accept the renegotiated contract. I can promise you, having gone over it extensively, and I think everyone up here feels the same way, than for bringing it in-house, because that's what I originally supported. So I can tell you I did change my mind after the, the administration did a phenomenal job and our uh, city attorney's office did a phenomenal job, and Mr. G Jose Gonzalez, all of them working together to give us a contract that would benefit all of us, and I really feel strongly that it does. The overhead for us is very low, the benefits are great. And as someone once mentioned in one of our meetings, if we had a major accident in the city of Kenner, we would almost be financially, it would be financially disastrous for us, whereas Veolia can absorb the cost. So there are many reasons why this is a good contract for us. Thank you. Let me turn my mic on. Thank you, Council Member DeFranches. Council Member Ampastata, you have the floor. I would just like to express gratitude on behalf of the citizens, citizens of the city of Kenner to the administration, uh, to Mr. Lockwood from Hartman Engineering, the consultant retained by the city who did work on this, as well as Veolia, because this new agreement, with interest in everything, all the savings, uh, roughly $300,000 a year, will be saved in the city budget. So that, that's certainly uh, pretty easy to get behind. So that's all. Thank you, Councilman. Um, you kind of took the words out of my mouth because I was going to say the same thing, but, uh, you know, thank, thanks to Mr. Quigley and the administration and everybody that worked. Uh, this was, uh, I know we've had lots of council meetings to discuss this, and, um, it, you know, it, it's, a, it's a win for the city right now. So thank you. Hope everybody will support it. Seeing no other discussion, council members, please vote. Need one more vote, please. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 6 0. Councilmember Klein is abstaining from voting tonight. Thank you. Item 16 is ordinances and, sum and resolutions in summary for first reading. Item 16A is an ordinance authorizing the transfer of the franchise by and between the City of Kenner and Entergy Louisiana LLC successor and in interest to Louisiana Power and Light Company to Entergy Louisiana Power LLC. Item 16B is an ordinance amending sections 16-32 and 16-33 of the Code of Ordinances so as to eliminate residency requirements for certificates of public necessity and convenience. Oh, Item 16C is an ordinance ratifying the purchase of geotextile fabric from RAMJ Construction LLC in the amount of $12,500 for the Department of Public Works. Item 16D is an ordinance authorizing the utilization of state contract number 408849 with BITS Technical Company LLC for the purchase and installation of a digital video recording system in the amount of $15,100 for the Kenner Police Department. Item 16E is an ordinance accepting the responsive bid received from Vulcan Incorporated to supply sign poles, brackets, and miscellaneous sign supplies on an as-needed basis in accordance with sealed bid number 15-6276 and an amount not to exceed $100,000 per year for the Department of Public Works. Item 16F is an ordinance accepting the lowest responsive bid received from Bliss Products and Services Incorporated in the amount of 
$33,848.39 to furnish and install new playground equipment at Susan Park Playground in accordance with sealed bid number 15-6277 for the Department of Parks and Recreation. Item 17 is reports from the council and our special committees. Okay, uh, I, I guess I'm going to start off by just wishing all the fathers uh, out there uh, a happy Father's Day. <laughs> and do we have anybody else that would like to? Okay. On, on, on behalf of the entire council. Okay, that's it. Item 18 is new business, and we have none tonight. Item 19 is unfinished business and or motions to reconsider or remove from the table to position. We have none. Item 20 is persons wishing to address the council on special subject matters. Al Morella. Al Morella, 4260 East Loyola Drive, 5th District, 43 years. I want to respond to some comments that was made in here at the June 4th meeting. I want to direct it to Councilman Carroll, but I see he's busy out here in the audience. I'm sure he can hear me, uh, whatever business he's conducting over there. Uh, I want to say uh, I've dedicated my life to advocating for hardworking men and women who pay the bills on every level of our government and are often non-existent to fat cat politicians until there's an election. Second, whatever meeting I attend, if I know about it, whatever meeting I attend anywhere in this city, if I sit in that meeting and I witness people asking questions about decisions that are being made affecting their life and the lives of their family, they can't get a straight answer, and sometimes they flat out right lied to. You better believe it. It's going to be an issue with me every time. Now, as far as where any community meetings are held, it doesn't matter to me whether it's Gabriel, whether it's Lincoln Manor, whether, whether it's Chateau Estates, uh, Susan Park, doesn't matter. Because when, whenever I witness something like I just said, I'm gonna always, it's gonna always be an issue with me. Now, I wanna echo what you said, Councilwoman DeFranchez, concerning our North Kennel Library. I couldn't agree with you more. They've done a beautiful job on that library. This is how I like to see my tax uh, dollars at work, uh, upgrading and improving our learning institutions. Okay? So uh, I want to appreciate the answers I got concerning the Viola water contract. And uh, it seems like it is going to be a lot different than what it was before. And to echo you again, Councilwoman DeFranchez, I was one of the most vocal citizens about that contract and called it what it was. Anybody got any comments, any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Al. Um, A.J. Giordano. A.J. Giordano, 3518 California Avenue. Um, <clears throat> February 2014, I had a attended a meeting with Mayor Yanni, Mr. Reno, Police Chief Carraway, and others, where <clears throat> during that meeting, I uh, asked the uh, police chief if there's anything he can do with, you know, with, about the speeders in my neighborhood. And, uh, you know, with the lack of resources the police department has, you know, he said, you know, there's so many, only so much they can be out on the street. But he did suggest that he could uh, procure a speed enforcement camera vehicle at no cost to the city. And then he, uh, he also said all this would need was three council members to uh, approve it. He said once this thing would be in place, it would take a one once daily for a radar check and that, you know, to put in place. And Mayor Yenny, even his own words, said, he said this sounds like a win-win situation because it wouldn't cost anything to the city. He asked you, Mr. Rainon, you know, to go with it, and then you asked me to talk, speak to the other uh, council members, which I did. I spoke to uh, Councilman Danapolis. He was on board because he said he had some bad spot, hot spots in his neighborhood. I spoke to Mr. Franchez, and she said she had a good rapport 
with Chief Carraway that she would speak to him and get all the details and work it out. Well, that was February 14th, you know. Um, this vehicle I'm talking about, you know, is used by Gretna, has been using it for years, West Wego, Lafayette, Baker, Louisiana. They all, you know, it's been for years they've been using this vehicle. Um, it's something that's there 24-7, 365, that, to target these speeders. Um, you know, I just, it's been 16 months since uh, this meeting, and, you know, I, I went forth and, you know, talked to the council members. I just, I guess, you know, cut it short, my question is to the city administration, to the police chief or this council, somebody, uh, why the city is not uh, going forward with this, uh, to you know, this device and to target speeders. You know, it, it's, see, to me, it sounds like a great idea, you know, and it's, it does take away from the police department their uh, manpower to be on the street when I got to call them to come out and they've set up a radar patrol for a couple of days and then they go and speed is back. But this thing is there and it can be moved around various uh, locations and get the hot spots. And my, my street is a hot spot because of Green Lawn School that they, uh, every day, if anybody wants to go there when that school's in, and you can see what goes on down there. It's a main street to cross the bridge and go to the school there now, you know, so. That's all I have to say. Just, I just <clears throat> want to find out. Somebody, please find you know answer my question. Uh, why the city hasn't procured it yet? Thank you. Okay, AJ. I'm going to let uh, responses after everybody speaks. So the next person up is Richard Brown. Thank you, Mr. President. I was going to leave, but decided to wait since you were at the end of the meeting. Uh, Richard Brown, 824 Sessions Lane. I've got to respond to what my friend A.J. Jordina was just talking about. If he's talking about wanting the city to bring in traffic cameras like Jefferson Parish used to have and like Gretna has and then Harahan, uh, adamantly, strongly, absolutely, positively oppose them. Kenner has considered them. The Kenner City Council in the past decided they didn't want anything to do with them. Jefferson Parish has gotten rid of them. Other cities are getting rid of them. Now, if what Mr. Giardino wants is something that the Kenner Police Department used to have and used to use, which are these trailers with a radar unit and a big screen that flashes your speed on the screen as you drive by, that's fine. I haven't seen those in a few years. I don't know if the Kenner Police Department still has any of them. Several years ago, they used them in my neighborhood. They did, did seem to work to slow down traffic. But I would, I, um, I've been studying this traffic, the, these speed cameras and red light cameras for years, many years. In fact, I was asked to serve on the Citizens Committee that Kenner appointed several years ago, but I turned it turned down the position to save, to serve, but, but furnish them information. Uh, I urge you to think long and hard before you, you go there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Brown. Uh, next up is uh, Deborah Bailey. You could state your name and address for the record, please. Deborah Bailey, 2129 West Mallory, Kenner, Louisiana. Uh, I have people that's running the stop side. I've been complaining for the last two months with the city of Kenner about if they don't want to stop, why don't they just remove the sign? It's going to cause an accident. It's right here on Clay Bridge. Okay, what I'm going to do is let everybody speak, and then we'll get answers for you when it's all done so that we're not debating each thing, but but is that, that was your only? No, and they have, I'm trying to find out, are you allowed to like put uh, trailers on properties with no tags on them? Because I, code, I called code enforcement and reported last week. He come out, took a picture of the front, took a picture of the back, drove off, I called the city back. They told me it's okay, he can have it there. He don't need a tag on it. Okay, we'll get those questions answered. Um, next person up is Deborah Clay. Ms. Clay? Oh, oh, 
Okay, and it looks like Elizabeth Lewis. And she's not here either. So, um, does anybody, who wants to respond? Chief, you want to respond about the... Uh, Which one you want first? <laughs> we, we no longer have the speed uh, trailers. They were, I believe, auctioned off five, six years ago. So we, we no longer have those. Uh, the, traffic, the, the running of the stop sign complaints, we forward every complaint received to the, our traffic section who will go out during, periodically during the day and uh, conduct enforcement. And this happens all throughout the city. Uh, the ongoing, I don't know if, if I'm aware of, of her complaint or not. Um, after the meeting, I'll talk and find out if she's uh, observed any enforcement. Uh, the speed, cars and or trailers that issue citations, uh, I wasn't in any of the uh, conversations or meetings where we, that was even discussed. So before that can even be addressed, you know, this council would have to change a couple of ordinances to allow it. But I probably, I would not be in favor of, of the speed enforcement by, by any kind of mechanical means. Okay, and, and Chief, you have bicycle patrols that are patrolling Green Lawn, is that correct? That's correct. And I think the street that uh, AJ was talking about mainly is California Street. Um, can we ask for some maybe additional whenever you have? Yeah, no, I'll, I'll send them uh, his complaint. It, the bicycle guys, they move around wherever right. we have issues to address. Uh, and during, he is correct, during, during school years, uh, they, we have several schools in the city of Canada that are, are traffic headaches for the residents, the, the parents picking up children, and the police. I mean, some of them, there are, there are no easy fixes to some of these traffic problems. Uh, the school, Jefferson Parish School Board, uh, I guess every school year requests more kind of police assistance in directing traffic. Uh, we do it in the morning, we do it in the, in the afternoon, one available, but it's, it's, if you ever see, like for example, Chateau, they back up on Chateau Boulevard, as a in uh, a the Alexander School, they back up on West Esplanade. There is just no place to put all these automobiles picking up children from school, uh, and the ones walking from school, uh, the school crossing guards provide a little help in and around the immediate area school, but once they get out into the neighborhoods, it's a whole other issue, because you have the, the Chateau Estates area making complaints to the kids walking on grass and gardens, and it's just, it does strain uh, the resources. But we, ad we address it. We, we try to send messages to the, the principal. The principal uh, sends it through the teachers and through the parents. It alleviates it for a day or two, but then it comes right back the, ne the next week. The actions aren't changed. But I will address the running of the stop signs and the speeding in the, the Green Lawn area. Okay, thank yeah. you, Chief. And um, Ms. Vallow, would you respond to the trailer and for Ms. Bailey? I was speaking with uh, the city attorney. What was the address on the on the trailer? Ms. Bailey, would yeah, twenty one twenty nine West Mattery is your address. So we, so, so, I think the best way to handle this is after the meeting. Ms. Vallow will come see you and get your number and your information, and y'all can talk because she's the head of code. So she's going to be the person. We're going to put you directly in contact with her, and hopefully we're going to get your problem resolved. Okay? Thank you. Um, Mr. Segur. Uh, Council Member Segur. Council, uh, uh, was your complaint on the Clay Street Bridge the fact that there's a yield sign on one end? The yield's going toward Clay. The stop sign is going toward the actual address. Pattern when you go back, turn on this and back up to the street. The 
I'm going to get Council Member Segura to come chat with you too when it's is over, if that's okay. Yeah, no, we've received her complaint oh, okay. and we've asked for an explanation. Okay. So. okay. Does anybody else have any comments for any of the people that signed up to speak? I just have one comment for Mr. Morella. Uh, Al, you have an envelope in your hand. You asked me for information at the last meeting, and in that envelope is the answers, and we also mailed it to your house, but I didn't want you to say, hey, I didn't get it in the mail, because I know U.S. mail, sometimes they lose stuff, so you also have a, a hand copy, okay? You all your I got it. Thank you. I read it over some coffee. You call me. My, I put my card in there. It has my cell number. Please feel free to call me anytime on myself. Thank you, man. All right. Anybody else? Okay, I think we're done then. Motion to close, motion to adjourn by, by Klein and Conley. And, and Quigley, I got you out here in time. We can go watch the, well, I'm going one place to watch it. You're going somewhere else.